Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the vlog. Uh, Tuesday morning, and we appear to have a visitor in the marina. So Martin's been here a couple of days, um, but I've not been available um, for various reasons, which I might talk about later on. Nothing important. I had a tooth removed. Oh, I might as well tell you now. <laughs> I had a tooth removed and um, I've had some problems with the socket and uh, yeah it's been a bit of a bit of a pain actually uh, quite in the literal sense um, but we're here today and hopefully I'm on a course of antibiotics which Gemma will kindly pick up from me uh, for me today from her um, old job because she used to be a dental nurse so it's quite handy to have a um, in the family, of course, for things like this. So I'm going into the into the bar to do my morning checks. So you may as well come with me, and let's have a look how neat. I just painted this door the other day. It needs another coat. Let's have a look how neat everything is today. So looking good, looking good. We've got some boxes stored out the way there. Nothing really on the floor, and if it is, it's in a tray. I'm happy with that. Um, these plates, we're taking them back next door. We're changing them out. Let's have a look in the cold room, ladies and gents. What we got going on in the bar this week? Well, you'll see here, we've got Andy from Four Priests. We've got his second cask of Mergy straight on this week. That seems to be going down well. We've got our cast conditioning sheet on the wall telling us what's been tapped and when. Line equipment guides. I've just put these up recently for the staff so they've got a, um, a, a reference when they are doing things just in case I'm not around. They've got a reference. Looking a bit sparse on the keg front in here but oh with they're all over here look. Shall we just turn this fan off so you can hear me talk and we'll have a look what we've got in. So we've got Wild Beer Millionaire Milk Stout, Steady Rolling Man again, Buxton Trolltunga again, that seems to be popular, Verdant Light Bulb and Pale Horse IPA from Odyssey. Now I'm not sure how many of them were left over from our previous um foray into the beer cellar we've got wild ipa there look and we've got ipa mosaic from the colonel that is excellent by the way oh we've got a thistly cross cider would you look at her right let's turn that back on we've got some cooking apples in here so the boys in the kitchen have been having a play and then we've got a bit of a veg store spuds and onions so let's go upstairs and have a look in the kitchen. So this is normally what I do when I come in. I just make sure everything's all tied up. We don't have any bags that have been left open or any tubs that have been left open overnight. You know, have a look around and check everything. Mop buckets cleaned out, exactly what I want to see. Now we come up to the top of the stairs. It's a bit dark, so I'll turn the light on. This is the towel bag for all the dirty tea towels. This is the rotor and timesheet area and the computer for the chef to use in order to develop his recipes and order his stock. And then into the kitchen. So, put this up recently, just makes things a little bit easier. Uh, to communicate order from one member of staff to the next, you know what we might need and then here we have The pass you'll notice it's been rotated around to the side So we've taken a new tack on that front and um, because uh, Liam the new chef likes to work side by side with the sous chef and it seems to be working very well but yeah, I'm rather Rather pleased with how things look in here actually. And then we'll go through into the 
into the pub area and we'll just have a look around in here there's a bit of glare coming in off these windows just check it's not this camera mm, could have been the camera we've got the comms book so we can talk to each other as well there'll be little things in there let's have a look uh, da, 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 da. Stuart told me that all the containers need to be cleaned again. I also mopped the bar three times, but it's still greasy. So somebody must have spilt something behind the bar. We'll go and have a look in a moment. There's the good old Murgy straight. And yeah, that's about it. That's normally how I do my checks. Check for some post. No, no post. We are going to be doing quite a bit of painting in here shortly, so uh, <laughs> there'll be some videos of that coming, no doubt. Um, and I wonder what's been spilt behind the bar then, who knows. So it just remains for me to check what yesterday's takings were like, and then we'll go across into the brewery. And I've got some fans to work on in the cold room today, so we're going to start that project. So one of the jobs, one of the other jobs today is to change out these... 80 watt axial fans, 12 volt 80 watt axial fans, um, which we have in the cold rooms. And we're going to change them to something that you might think, well, that's astonishingly different in size. But we're going to fit two of these instead of one of these big ones. So these are 0 0.08 amps at, uh, that works at 228 volts or 230 volts, that works out at 18 watts. So combined, we've got 36 watts instead of 80 watts. So I want to just run some numbers to make sure that that became um, a valid change. So these were 80 quid for uh, what we got. There's 10 of these here, or might be 12, but I'm only going to need six of them. So I thought, is it worth the investment of spending 80 pounds to change out these fans? Am I going to see a return in my investment from a reduction in the electricity bill? So I wanted to work out the numbers. Just ignore this stuff up here. I was, try was trying to fix some cabling the other day. So at the minute, we're paying um, 65 pence per kilowatt hour. Ridiculous, I know, right? So let's put that into an equation. So we've got 80 watts times 65p per kilowatt hour um, and then we'll do that per day so times 24 uh, that gives us one pounds and 24.8 pence a day right we'll times that 365 days for the year, that's going to give us £455.52p, and I believe. So, that's how much it's going to cost to run one of these 80 watt fans. And then we've got three of those 80 watt fans, so times three, and that equals what we got 1366 Right, the fans cost us 80. Let's figure out how much money we're going to save. So the new ones are 18 watts. And we're going to do the same equation again. Times 65p. Times 24. That comes to 28 pence per fan. So uh, we'll times that 365 for the year. It's going to cost us £102 and about 20p. And then we're going to replace it for six of those fans. I'm going to replace three of these. So we'll times that by six. And that gives us a grand total of running cost of these fans of £613.20. I think that's right. So all we need to do is take the 613 pounds off of the 1366 which is 753 pounds 36 
and that is our saving so even if we minus our 80 quid we're still over 60 pound uh, 600 pounds in savings on electricity costs now these fans aren't going to be uh, moving as much air by a long shot as these but they don't need to they just need to be moving air through the cooling matrix if you like for want of a better word it is a car radiator let's uh, not beat around the bush so I think two of these is going to be sufficient to keep that air moving and then that just little air circulation current in the cold room itself will be enough to spread it around I'm sure it will I'm almost sure it will so we're going to hook these up anyway we're going to change the system out because at the moment we are running on 12 volts we've got a we've got a 12 volt transformer on the wall there so we'll just remove that from these linkages and we'll change the cable out for 240 and probably at the same time install some uh, waterproof connections because the only thing I don't like about these is this single insulated cable because of course it is meant to be going into um, an enclosure of some type so I'll probably sleeve this and then we'll have some connections to give us a double insulated unit and fingers crossed this will save us a lot of money now that electricity is becoming prohibitively expensive. So this is an example of one of the old cooling fans. And of course, it was on a timber frame, which I was never a big fan of. Um, this has been extensively varnished, but as you can see, it does encourage mold growth and it's difficult to clean. So. It's been a good move today, I think, to see the back of those. So those 80 watt fans have been taken off and I've built by chopping up some hollow angle, which is this stuff. It's called hollow because it is indeed hollow on the end. But we've built this plastic version of the same kind of thing. So this is a plastic frame designed to hold the car radiator down the centre there. And we've got on the back the two fans. We've put some second ins secondary insulation on the cables as well. So now they're double insulated. And also a little Wago box, which I'm going to clip to the top out of the way of any condensation. So the only difference here is that these fans are going to be drawing through the um, car radiator or the cooler, let's call it the cooling matrix, rather than blowing through. And on reflection, now I've just been in there and had a look at it, might not have been the best way of doing things. If I want to change it, it's just a case of four cable ties, clip, flip, and put them back on. But we'll see. I think it will be fine, but the proof of the pudding's in the eating. So I've got two of these on. Um cold rooms one two and three I think and uh, we're gonna see what the temperatures like in the morning so this has already started coming down it was at 19 I think so let's go in here because this is the only cold room with a light this is the hop store let's just pull the door out of the way which is easily done let's put the light on Yes, we have quite a lot of hops. Would you believe it? And it's quiet, but you can hear the fan. So as you can see, we've got it connected to the wall. We've already got condensation forming on this edge here. And I can feel the cold air around it. It's obviously not as powerful as it was, but it's working nonetheless. Here we've got the cable in the back and it all looks nice and tidy actually so i'm quite happy with how that's worked out it's a lot slimmer on the wall this is a piece of guttering that runs to a waste pipe that goes outside to a, a gutter a drain should i say so any condensation that we do get forming on here is going to drip away 
But what I like about this is it's quiet, it's now hygienic and we can wipe it down. And of course, the best part of all is it's a fraction of the price to run. So even if we lose a little bit of efficiency in air circulation, at least we've cut that energy bill down. And we'll come in tomorrow. If this room is below 10 degrees tomorrow morning, we've friggin' cracked it. Well, that's it, folks. I'm going to call it a day today. I'm quite happy with how this has turned out. I'm going to install this last one tomorrow when I've checked on those temperatures. Uh, but other than that, thanks for watching, folks. Keep liking, keep subscribing, and we'll see you on another video pretty soon. Cheers.